I found it on Rayma Radio. This week's sermon is shared by Reverend Mohan Singh on 7th of August 2016 at Shiloh Assembly of God Setapak entitled Revivers O Lord. He says that too often we pray amiss because we fail to comprehend his holy wrath. We lament the ills of our nation while refusing to accept the possibility that the state of our nation mirrors the state of the church. And some of the times, you know, he, I think he, he did hit a point by saying that, yes, it is maybe the state of our church and that's why we are facing all this. Uh, when, we, our, when our prayer has not caused your anger towards us to cease. One of the, one of the verse here says, you know, that your, you cause your indignation, verse 4, or your wrath towards us to cease. You know, we need to cry out to God. Because we see our nation hit left, right, center, one day after another. There are a lot of things that are causing this nation to go under. I shared with you before, the prophecies of our nation, that God has sent His, His servants from all over the world, and even from prophets here in Malaysia. That the destiny of this nation, God wants to use this nation powerfully. And because God has already earmarked and already been announced, now the devil has he, he's coming in and stirring up to destroy what God wants to do. So the church at large must rise up. We the church. The church is not the name outside that you see Shiloh Assembly of God. The church is you. And until you and I begin to take that stand and turn to God and say, Oh God, Lord, intervene. Lord, we're going to stand together with our brothers and sisters and we want to stand. Now, notice, if you want revival, revival is for here now, not tomorrow, now. We need a national restoration. The, the Tommy says, restore us, O God, of our salvation. This nation needs restoration from God. We need the hand of God to touch us once again. The focus on the land is mentioned in verse 1, verse 9 and verse 12. The focus is this land. Saying to restore and verse 1 and verse 4, it says restore and return. We need to cry to God to restore, to bring back to what God has destined this nation to be. What God has destined you, your future, the plans that He has purposed for you, for this land where we are staying in. This land needs to be healed. Amen? Amen. So I pray that this morning, that as we read this psalm and as we go through verse and verse, that you will come to this point in your, in your, in your, in your life that you will say, Oh God, Lord, without revival, nothing can break through in this nation. God, you need to revive. That's why the psalmist says, verse 6, Will you not yourself revive us again? If we want revival, can we revive ourselves? Can we just go out and you know, start speaking and sharing? Can we do anything on our own? We, we are trying every effort. People are trying in their own strength to bring you know, success and bring alignment in our nation. But let me tell you, man's effort will not succeed. Let me say it again. Man's effort will not succeed. If we want to see breakthroughs, then we need to align ourselves and come back to the place of fasting and prayer. We need to begin to be serious and really go to God in prayer and say, Oh God, God, don't pass us by. God's spirit is moving all over the world. You know, I was, I was reading lately to see, because I, I, I always look out for revivals to see what God is doing. And then I, I begin to see there are revivals that are taking place in places, obscure places, small places. Why? Because people are crying out for God. They, they, there's so much of lack, there's so much of, you know, as if they are alone, but they are turning to God and God is bringing revival in remote places, 
If God can do that even now in this generation, in this century, and He's doing it in other places, can He not do us do it in Malaysia? I, I believe that it's time for us. If we want to see revival, then we need to come back and begin to build our prayer closets. And so now, what Malaysia is doing together with NECF, the Assemblies of God, we have actually began this, what we call prayer altars. Prayer altars. Begin to build an altar once again in your own life in your own life, in your own church. And this will bring changes. I was reading, and I think I shared with you before, about the nation of Uganda. Now this man that God raised is from Uganda, John Mulindi. Alright? And as I shared with you before, of the miracle that took place in this nation. This nation was a nation that was going to destruction. Idi Amin, and all the others who came over, and that whole nation, it was the highest number of AIDS in this nation. It was so high, in fact, there was no way out. Even United Nations gave up. And they had an official who was a Christian in that nation who went up to the church, to the pastors, and told the pastors that unless you pastors turn to God and begin to seek God, our whole, our whole nation will go under. And God began to move this man, John Molindi, and a few other pastors together. They went up to the mountains to pray. I began to ask God, to seek God, for an answer for the, that God would touch them and bring healing to the nation. And God began to show them how he was going to build prayer altars all over the nation. In their homes, in their offices, and revival began to break forth. So can this happen in Malaysia? Yes. But are we, the church, ready? Because until we begin to sacrifice and give time to God and make time for God, begin to turn all our schedules and realign our lifestyle, then only we're going to see breakthrough. So let's read from verse 1. I want to show you what God shows us in His Word here. O oh Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the captivity of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. You know, He's praying and says, O oh Lord, you showed favor to your land. Do you, do you not know that God wants to show His favor? God's desire is He wants to put His favor, His, His grace to be upon us. <coughs> grace is the unmerited favor of God. O oh Lord, You have showed favor to your land. Restore the captivity of Jacob. Jacob was living in a lot of himself. He was captive in his flesh. Captive in his own plan, in his purpose, that what he wanted. But God had to turn his life around. Jacob had an encounter. You need to come back to that, the ring and have a wrestling match with God. We need God to turn and hold and put his, his uh, interlock us with the right kind of block so that we cannot move anymore. <laughs> Huh? Wrestle us. Oh, that was the, the lock that he had when he wrestled the angel of God. The angel of God was going to go, but he held on and he would not let go and the angel locked him down until he unlocked his joint. I think God needs to send us an a angel to wrestle with us. But it was the desire of Jacob to break free from his chains. He worked and worked and worked and found nothing. In his despair, he went off. And in his despair, out in the wilderness, he laid his head on a stone. When he came to nothing, he's, God visited him. You see, we all think we are something. We all think we have made it. Because <clears throat> you're bet, much better off than many of us were 30, 40, 50 years ago. 
So now we are so cozy, we are so comfortable. We have not come to grips because we think we can make it on our own. Until we come to that of senses to know, hey, we cannot do anything. That's why he says, oh Lord, he's singing. First thing he's saying is, he's singing, the sons of Korah, you showed us favor on your land. He's saying, oh God, it's only God, only the Lord who can bring that favor and grace upon this land. Lord, show favor to your land. Restore the captivity of Jacob. And he turned the captivity of Jacob. Jacob had an encounter and his whole life turned around. And he began to pursue God. Where did he find that encounter? The place was called Bethel. Bethel speaks of the house of God. He came and, and the place was called Bethel. And that's where he had a battle, B-A-T-T-L-E, <laughs> with God. But when he wrestled and God turned him, he said, I have seen God face to face. We need an encounter individually and begin to seek God and say, God, we want to see restoration. We want to see healing on this land. But how does healing come to a land? Healing can only come when we begin to come to that place and repent. When we begin to come to God in repentance. That's why he says, Oh Lord, show your favor to your land. Restore the captivity. of You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sins. I believe that God can only cover us through whom? As I shared this morning. It's only through Jesus. The Old Testament was, you know, they had that sacrificial lamb that was given and the blood that was covered their sins. But now, we are living in a time when Jesus has already given his life and his blood and his body was broken for us and he has not only covered us, he has cleansed us completely. And how does pardon come to us? You know, sometimes when prisoners are put, when, when they, have a, uh, they are in prison and they're given a life sentence and there's you know death sentence or life sentence, the only way they can be set free is they get pardoned by the king. <clears throat> God has pardoned us. And it's only Jesus that pardons us. That pardon that he gives us, he wipes us and gives us a new slate that we can start all over again. Yes, this land has forsaken God, has done many things, but we need to come to God and say, God, Lord, we want to experience, Lord, we want you to restore, restore the joy of salvation. We want you to restore, Lord, and bring revival back, back once again to our nation. When we begin to see masses come to the Lord, we want to see the power of God, we want to see miracle signs and wonders take place, that will, will astonish these people. You have just heard a sermon from Rev. Mohan Singh at Shiloh Assembly of God, Setapa. Hi, this is Pastor Manto from Soul Space Community Church. The verse I have for you is from John chapter 14, verse 27. My favorite, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. God bless all of you. Good day everyone, my name is Pastor Justin Ryan from One Voice Ministries. Today I'd like to share with you a testimony about the comforting spirit of the Lord. This happened during one of our mission trips uh, to Bangladesh. My wife and I passed a missions ministry called One Voice Ministries. And in January of 2016, we were in Bangladesh in one of the remote villages about seven hours away from the city and we were ministering to pastors and leaders there. It was during that time that I received a call from Malaysia and I received news that my father had just passed away. It was very unexpected, uh, it was very untimely and it was really sudden because just uh, four days before, when, before leaving for Bangladesh, we went to the house and we were having a chat and we spoke to my parents and my dad as well. And I remember the last thing that I did was I gave him a hug. And I remember very clearly that, you know, on that day it was really raining, raining so heavily that there was a chance that I couldn't go and see him. But something in my spirit said, no, you know, let's go. 
let's go and see him because for my wife and myself every time before we travel we go and visit our families so i went gave him a hug and everything was well and good in fact we were drawing up plans to prepare for his 80th birthday and here i was in bangladesh receiving a call from my mom and i remember her words to me as i picked up the phone i heard my cousin on the other line and when that happened i knew that something had transpired at home and my mom came on the line and she said son papa is no more when i heard that my spirit just fell i was just overcome with sadness and shock more than anything and you know being on the mission field god always comes first the priority is the lord but my wife said to me you know let me just take the next session why don't you just sit back and just process everything that has happened i know this is hard news even my wife was shocked by what had happened and both of us were in tears there but i heard the voice of the lord and the lord said my son you do the next session and i really recall at that moment the one thought that came to me was my dad would have wanted me to continue preaching the word of god because he had a love for souls as well he had such a love for god and every time before we go for a mission trip he would bless us and he would say you know god goes with you so in my spirit i knew he wanted me to continue doing what i was doing and i carried on i spoke i taught and when it came to the altar call the lord had just led the session supernaturally that it came to an altar call and the surprising thing was as i think back never during that session did i make any reference to the passing of my dad i did not want to get the people emotionally worked up but i just preached the gospel and there were there were many of them who accepted the lord and that just showed me that the lord has such compassion and truly when the lord says my grace is sufficient for you it is sufficient it was more than enough for that moment and eventually we did make it back to malaysia we had to cut short our mission trip to be back for the funeral but that whole process taught me that the lord really looks after his children and the lord made a way for us to make it back to malaysia in time despite being so far away from the city everything lined up and there was no problem getting a flight back and we i praise and thank god for his hand upon me and for the spirit of comfort that sustained me during that time nothing compares to the love of the father he sent jesus his son to save us the savior who cleanses and loves us lepers opens our eyes and will take us home he will take us home we'll let to this cover the beautiful story of the one who redeemed us and gave up his glory to father now sin wash us clean and set us free we gladly surrender to you almighty Let your kingdom come Nothing come 
pants to the love of the Father. He sent Jesus His Son to save us. The Savior who cleansed us. Episode features music from Resurrect. Today's episode is edited by Moses Chan at Prodio Studio. We would love to hear from you, especially if you have a testimony to share. Write to us at hello at rema.rad.io. Stream or download new episodes weekly on Friday or Saturday evening. If you have not listened to Dr. Tony Lim from Malaysia Bible Seminary on God's Calling, listen to his interview in the last segment. Catch the interview with Pastor Alexa Ho on whether Christians should be involved in politics in the coming episode next week. I found it on Rima Radio.